In this video, I'm gonna quickly and easily show you how to put on a shoulder rest. However, I'm gonna provide some insight onto whether you should use a shoulder rest because some people use shoulder rest and some people do not. I'm Joel Kennedy, and today I'm gonna to be giving you some information you probably won't get anywhere else. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why some people use shoulder rest and some people do not use shoulder rest. And then you can make a good determination on whether it's right for you or not. So stick around. Okay, so first of all, how do you put on a shoulder rest? Okay, well, it's actually pretty easy, right? So here's what a shoulder look rest looks like on your violin. Now, uh, shoulder rests are pretty much, they're all very similar. So they have a, a, a section that, you know, rests on your shoulder blade and you have two feet and the feet connect to your violin. Now, most shoulder rests have two particular features. Most of them have a, a wider part and a narrower part, right? This part's a little wider than this one. And also, usually that wider part will have a bit of a dip in it. You see that curvature? This curvature is to fit your, uh, your shoulder blade. Not all of them have a dip. Some of them have you know, a slight one. Some of them have an extreme dip, but most of them have some kind of contour. You know. So what you wanna do, step number one, is find the fatter portion of the shoulder rest or the part with the dip. It might have both features, it might have just one. And that part is going to go on the side of the violin where your chin rest is, right? So here is your, here's the back of your violin. Here's the chin rest, right? So we're gonna take the, the, the fatter end, this is the fatter end, and that's the part that's gonna go uh, on the widest part of your violin. Then step number two is you're simply going to, you're just simply going to slide that shoulder rest up. Right, just slide it up. And for the most part, you'll want your shoulder rest to be on the widest part of the violin, right? So, so here's, here would be a narrower part, here's a narrower part, here's the widest part in between your violin. And the reason very, is very simple because, you know, if you put it on the wider part, it's just a good, it's a good metric to use, you know, for at least for starting out. And it probably will ensure that your shoulder rest doesn't fly off, right? So you don't want your shoulder rest to come off your violin, especially when you're playing, okay? So step number three is that you want to adjust the height of this shoulder rest. So remember the purpose of the shoulder rest is to bridge the gap between your shoulder blade and the back of the violin, right? So without a shoulder rest, you see I got this distance here, right? So with the shoulder rest, it bridges this gap right here. So that means that you want to adjust the shoulder rest so it bridges the gap appropriately. Most shoulder rests you can easily adjust by turning the feet clockwise to make this gap smaller, or you can turn it counterclockwise to make the gap wider, right? So I'm a, you know, I'm gonna, full size adult, if you want to call me that, right? So I'm gonna need a little bit more size you know, because of the distance is greater here. So I would adjust mine out quite a bit, right? So now it's adjusted. Now your goal is to, is to adjust it so when you're playing your violin, you're not doing this and you're not doing this, right? You want it to be as natural as possible. Remember, the violin is a very unnatural thing to do in so many ways. We want to introduce as many natural things to it as we possibly can to make it easier and to avoid injury, okay? So, there it is, right? So it's very easy to hold up my violin with a shoulder rest. Of course, it's not very difficult to do it without a shoulder rest either, but it is, it is more difficult to do it without a shoulder rest. And that's why people use shoulder rest. Okay, so that, that's the three steps on putting a shoulder rest in. But the question is, is that you wanna know, do you need a shoulder rest? I mean, there's all these great players that don't use shoulder rests, so why should you use a shoulder rest? Okay, so the simple answer to the question of whether you need a shoulder rest is no, you do not need a shoulder rest. Obviously, if you needed a shoulder rest, well, then everybody you know, would be using shoulder rest, but there's a lot of players who don't use a shoulder rest. There's great players that do, great players that don't. So what is the biggest reason why people use shoulder rests, especially these days, because shoulder rests have grown in popularity over the past you know, 5, 10, 20, 30 years. More and more people are using shoulder rests or starting using shoulder rests and they continue to use shoulder rests, right? So why, are, why do people use shoulder rests? Well, the reason why people use shoulder rests is, is very simple. The very difficult task of learning the violin is easier 
when you use shoulder rest, right? So in the same way that having a nice violin makes sounding nice easier, when you have nicer strings, it makes playing the violin easier. When you have a well set up violin, it makes playing it easier. When you have nicer rosin, it makes it easier to not have a scratchy sound. The violin, the rosin might stay on your bow. You know, um, there's, there's just a lot of things that we do that make learning the violin easier. Having a shoulder wrist is one of those things. But there's some other reasons why you may want to use a shoulder wrist. So there's three primary reasons why a lot of violin teachers require their students to use a shoulder rest, even though they could learn the violin perfectly fine without using a shoulder rest. So number one would be to promote good posture. Now it certainly is possible to play the violin just fine um, without having a shoulder rest, right? I can have good posture, I can have good left hand positioning, I can hold my instrument up, I can play all kinds of things on my violin without a shoulder rest, okay? But having a shoulder rest increases the probability that you won't develop bad posture, right? So what is bad posture, right? So bad posture would be having your violin in front of you instead of off to the side. Having bad, bad posture would be dropping your violin and playing it, you know, kind of droop down like this. Um, or, uh, well, yeah, there's, that's, that's pretty much, that, those are the primary ones, right? So posture is really important. It's important for a lot of reasons. If you have a shoulder rest, it doesn't mean that you're gonna have perfect posture. It just means that the probability of you learning correct posture has been increased. Okay, so the second reason why uh, teachers may require or strongly encourage you to use a shoulder rest is because it also promotes good left hand technique to an extent. So it doesn't, it certainly doesn't um, ensure that you're gonna have good left hand technique for sure, but it does increase the probability that you perhaps won't develop some bad habits with your left hand. And it also is gonna make it easier. So your left hand, its job is obviously to place the fingers down on the violin, right? And to also vi vibrato, right? But it basically creates the notes. So when you take the shoulder rest away, to some extent, you're giving the left hand another job. Now the hand has to not only create the notes, but it also has to, to some extent, hold your violin up. So in essence, you've made the job of your left hand more difficult. You've given it an additional job. It doesn't mean that it's impossible, obviously, but it does make it more difficult and it does increase the probability that you may develop um, some bad technical habits by holding the violin up by collapsing your collapsing your wrist, holding it up with your palm, maybe collapsing your fingers, maybe putting your thumb really far up in order to support the instrument. So there's a myriad of bad technical things or bad technical habits that you may learn um, that you may not learn, or at least you have less probability of learning by using a shoulder rest. Okay, so the third reason is, is that the shoulder rest also decreases the probability that um, you will not develop uh, an injury or uh, uh, bad habits that could develop into long-term injuries and or suffering and pain, okay? So what I mean is, is that if you're, if you're holding your violin up without a shoulder rest, you're having to bridge that gap by lifting up your shoulder. Now, you can learn to play the violin by slightly lifting your shoulder and you can uh, pr avoid most uh, tension and injury, but it's just more difficult to learn to do that properly. Um, because when, if you're going like this and you're kind of impinging your, your joint or putting tension into your muscle, over a long term, if you do it the wrong way, you can develop tension, you can develop pain in your back, in your shoulder, in your neck. And uh, remember, playing an instrument, tension is your enemy. You don't want tension for a variety of reasons. So if you have a great teacher and you're a great student and they're teaching you excellent technique, yes, of course, you don't need a shoulder rest. However, having a shoulder rest does make the teacher's job easier, it makes your job easier, and it decreases the probability that you will um, start to generate some of those uh, habits that may harm you down the road or make violin more difficult to learn on the onset. So those are the three big reasons why 
uh, people use the violin and why a lot of teachers require their students to use, not the violin, the shoulder rest, and why a lot of teachers require their students to use a shoulder rest. Okay, so what are the cons to using a shoulder rest? Okay, so there's three primary cons to using a shoulder rest. The first one is, is that shoulder rests usually do have a negative impact on your sound. So I don't know if the, uh, the microphone can pick this up or not, but with the shoulder rest, right, I'll take the shoulder rest off. So, I, like I said, I don't know if the microphone can pick it up or not, but a shoulder rest to some extent acts like a giant muffler. Remember, your instrument needs to vibrate in order to generate sound and sound waves, right? It needs to vibrate. Well, when you put a giant, you know, muffler, basically something that inhibits vibration on your instrument, then, you know, it's going to affect the sound of your instrument. To some extent, you could argue that the sound is a little bit nicer sometimes because it kind of gives your sound usually a little bit more of a darker, more mellower sound to some extent, but because it prevents it from vibrating, the violin is not really sounding the way it would sound. It would organically and naturally sound. So the projection, uh, its, its ability to project its sound, uh, the brightness of the instrument, perhaps some of the, uh, the more subtle tones that your instrument may produce in its, in its tone quality might get lost by using a shoulder rest. So that would be a definite downside to using a shoulder rest. Now, the kind of shoulder rest you use will determine how much negative impact it can. Now, if your shoulder rest has wood in it, then generally a wood shoulder rest is gonna um, uh, vibrate with your instrument a little bit more than something that's just plastic, for example. And so that's why a lot of times when you see professionals use shoulder rests, a lot of times they're almost always using a wood shoulder rest because it um, kind of dissipates some of the negative impacts that a shoulder rest might have uh, on their instrument. Okay, the second con of a shoulder rest is the fact that you have to buy it, right? So, you know, shoulder rests aren't terribly expensive. Usually you can get a really nice one for 50 or 60 bucks, and you can get some pretty decent ones for around 20 bucks or so, or even less sometimes. So um, it, it, it's not terribly expensive, but you know, you do have to buy them. Um, but I will mention though, that it's important that if you buy a shoulder rest, let's say you just wanna try it out, just don't buy some really, really cheap shoulder rest. It's a just, because, the, because if you buy a cheap shoulder rest, then they're probably gonna fall off your instrument, number one. Number two, there's a good chance that they're gonna break anyway, so you'll end up, if you like a shoulder rest, you'll have to buy another one. And number three, when they do break, they might damage your instrument. I've seen it happen, it's happened to me personally. You know, if, if they've got some joints here or whatever and they break, you know, they, when they break and they slap up against your instrument, then they scratch it really bad. So they're just, they're way more hassle than they're worth. Just buy a decent shoulder rest. If there's a million shoulder rests out there, but really just make sure it's got a warranty. Make sure you buy from a company, a reputable company where you can pick up a phone and you can talk to them and ask them, hey, do you recommend the shoulder rest or do you think I should buy a different shoulder rest or whatever, you know? So just make sure it's a company, they got a good reputation and they got a warranty, then you're probably gonna get a decent shoulder rest. Okay, the third con to a shoulder rest would be that you have to store it, right? So you have to, you got to pack it around. It's not a big deal. If you've got a, if you've got a large case, it's got a lot of storage in it. It's not a big deal. But a lot of people these days are using uh, these kind of shape, really cool looking shape cases and whatnot. But a lot of times these cases they don't have a lot of storage in them, so it can be challenging to find a place to put your shoulder rest. So you know that is a con. Uh, just make sure that if you use your shoulder rest, that you you know you have uh, your, you can store it in your case so you don't leave it somewhere because then you'll be buying two shoulder rests, right? And the final con to a shoulder rest would be that uh, it, could, it could harm your instrument, right? And this is kind of going on, this is kind of going with uh, point number two that I was making. Make sure you buy a decent quality uh, shoulder rest, right? So some shoulder rests can damage your instrument. So you want to make sure when you do buy a shoulder rest that it's got high quality, you know, formed rubber here on the ends. 
You know, some of the really cheap shoulder rests, they're just plastic. They're just plastic on the feet and they not only slide off your, your instrument, but they can also damage your instrument. Or they've got little plastic inserts that'll fall off and then it's just the metal and then the, the metal goes on your instrument and, and it can scratch your instrument up. So you just, you know, they can damage your instrument. So, but as long as you get a decent quality shoulder rest, then, you know, it's probably not a big deal. So I hope this video has been helpful. And if you have any other questions, hey, just put them down below. I answer most of the YouTube comments that I get and if it's social media, you can DM me, message me, whatever. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Uh, just take a moment to, to do that. It tells me that you guys like my videos and you want me to create some more content for you guys. And don't forget to hit the alert bell so you get a notification. And uh, don't forget, you know, here at Kennedy Violins, you know, we are players and teachers. So, you know, we're always happy to answer any kind of questions you guys have anytime. Thanks, guys.